Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to be talking about the lesser known reasons why you might not want to host your website on Webflow's platform. Webflow is a great website authoring platform, but that reason alone isn't strong enough as to why you should be hosting on their service. So other than the obvious, which is price, we're gonna dig into a few reasons uh, and a few things to think about when determining whether you should be hosting on Webflow's platform. And it's really important to get these questions answered right from the beginning. The first and biggest reason why you might not want to host on Webflow's platform is quite simply GDPR. Now I'm no expert in GDPR, uh, but I know enough to go to an expert in GDPR when it's necessary on website projects. So if your website is being accessed by European citizens, then your website needs to be GDPR compliant. So unless you're blocking people from Europe from accessing your website, unfortunately you do need to be GDPR compliant. And more specifically, if you're collecting the data of European citizens, then of course you need to be GDPR compliant. I'll link an article where Webflow discusses their GDPR compliance and it looks like they're doing a great job as it stands uh, right now. But in the future, you'll be dependent on you know, them maintaining that compliance. And on top of that, your client just might not feel comfortable relying on Webflow to be GDPR compliant. Another thing to understand is security concerns. Webflow is a platform and platforms can get hacked. Recently, Twitter was hacked and the uh, President of the United States Twitter account and many other celebrities, their accounts were hacked and tweets were sent out to demand uh, to asking asking for money uh, in the form of Bitcoin. So to some clients, just having personal data stored on a platform somewhere is against their policy. So it's important to understand how, what their tolerance is when it comes to data uh, existing and outside of the platforms and tools that they use themselves. If you're hosting elsewhere, then you'll have more control over the data stored in the system. So again, if you know nothing about servers and security, I suggest you go and source external help when it comes to that sort of thing and setting up things in a, in, a, in a safe and secure way. Another big reason is bugs. Again, mentioned Webflow is a platform, it's a service, and we're hugely dependent on the Webflow development team not creating any bugs or that system going down for our website to run smoothly and, and operate um, consistently uh, during the duration of its lifetime. So I recently spoke to Joe Krug about this uh, on my podcast. I'll leave a link below to that episode when it does come out. It's not out, out just right now. But we talk about the enterprise level service that Webflow offers some of their more higher paying clients. And it actually seems like a really good service. But again, it might not, your, your client might not be comfortable with the, the sort of services and the, um, the offering that the enterprise level has. Again, it's another person that you're dependent on to get your website operating, to get it up and running if it does go down or if there's a problem. So there's no secret that Webflow uses jQuery, which is notoriously quite a bulky piece of uh, a library that it uses to do all its animations. And although the, there are some websites out there built in Webflow that are getting score, scores quite high on Google's kind of website ranking software, there can be performance uh, gains just by removing some of the downloads and, and various things that you are not using on your website. Uh, you can then speed up and, and your website will be more performant with that level of, of control when you're hosting it yourself. Overall, hosting on Webflow service, it becomes harder to guarantee control over various aspects of your website. So for a business, not having control is a big deal. So what can you do about it? The simplest and easiest way to host your own Webflow website is Netlify. It's very simple is that you upload your website, it provisions the SSL certificates, so HTTPS, um, it even has its own CMS. So if you don't know this already, you cannot export the CMS entries from your Webflow website. I'll leave a link in the description below of how, how you can download the HTML pages where that CMS content has been rendered uh, and you'll upload those pages independently. But again, it's it's just something you need to bear in mind. Like I say, Netlify has its own CMS system, which is great. It's a little bit tricky to set up, but it enables you to have your own CMS. It's also got analytics, it's got A-B testing. It's a very, very powerful platform to host your websites. Oh, and did I mention it's free? Let me know if you wanna see a tutorial on how to get your website on Netlify using GitHub. 
Uh, if you don't know what GitHub is, it's sort of a version control system for the code. So if you make changes, you can actually go back and, and undo those changes or, or work out what was done or what was changed. Uh, so let me know if you want that in the, in the comments below. Um, and so if you found this helpful as well, then give the, the video a like. If you want to hear more about this sort of stuff, then give me a subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're notified the next time I release a episode. And until next time, happy no coding.